I'd like to speak for a minute or two about getting perspective. I love the juxtaposition of the words of the psalmist when we read, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. The same one who heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds is the one who keeps track of the stellar heavens. And again, Isaiah writes, He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He'll gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. And then immediately says, Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, measured heaven with a span, and calculated the dust of the earth in a measure? Who has weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance? It's the same one. And I'm reminded of this so often. Uh, One of my little grandchildren comes to me with a broken toy, and they're brokenhearted about it. And I shouldn't say to them, well, listen, don't you know what just happened recently in Beirut? And, you know, sometimes we need to have a little perspective check ourselves because you think, for example, of the difficulties we may be facing with COVID. What are they compared to what other people may be going through? And while it's important for us to understand that difference, let's never forget that whatever we bring to the Lord, He takes us seriously. Just like I take my grandchild seriously And don't say to them, well, wait a minute, don't you know what's going on in the Middle East? So it's important for us, on the one hand, not to overestimate the difficulties we're going through when we think of the suffering church around the world, for example. I'll never forget many, many years ago when I first went out preaching, and I had been uh, serving the Lord down in an area of very wealthy homes, and the Christians were very wealthy mostly. Uh, I was being taken out to the best restaurants, driving in lovely cars, going to their homes with beautiful rose gardens and, and lovely antique furniture and paintings. And, you know, we lived in a little one bedroom cottage at the time, and I, I confess I kind of liked it. And, and I maybe began to feel a little sorry for myself. Well, then the very next week, I ended up going to an inner city assembly, a fellowship of believers uh, who had come to this country. They were impoverished. Many of them had three part-time jobs trying to keep things together. I was staying in one of the few homes that was in the process of being purchased in a very difficult area. The brother told me, There had been a murder on their street every week since they had moved in. They had four locks, four uh, draw bolts on the four corners of the front door. And he said, if we didn't do that, they'd take the door away. And we had rice and beans every meal. The, The fellowship couldn't even afford hymn books, and I was able to help them get some used hymn books. But as I looked at that situation, I realized, uh, Nicholson, get a grip on yourself here. There are many Christians around the world who go through very difficult times. A friend of ours who traveled into Haiti where they were helping to set up a medical clinic. And uh, when he got up in the morning said, what's for breakfast? And the brother said, oh, brother, we just have a couple of meals a week. The rest of the time we chew grass or bark or something. Like, what? I visited a conference of workers in India and I had people coming to me, one man who had his Ph.D. in linguistics, and he could have been making big money in the West. He had been working with this Stone Age group of people, the cannibals, and as he was working with them, he was out preaching one day, and they ran at him, and they threw flaming liquid on on his body, and his one arm caught fire. And he showed me his hand. It was all clawed. He said, I used to use this hand, to work my computer in translating the Bible, and I can't do it anymore. But then he said with a smile, you know, when this happened to me, my son was away from the Lord, and uh, this brought him back to the Lord. And he said, "Uh, that was a good deal, don't you think? I traded my right arm for my son, and now he works with me on translating the Bible. As I interacted with these brothers, many of them who had lost their wives or had been beaten or whatever the case might be, 
it just brings back to us the fact that in many cases we are so blessed. We have so much to be thankful for. One last little clip. Many years ago I was working with a Christian rest home. There was an old man there that I took to the hospital to the emergency room. He lay there all night. It took almost, I mean, hours until they finally paid some attention to him and afterwards told me that he had all sorts of things wrong with him and he should have been in agony, screaming out in pain. And I said to him, brother, how can you do this? And he said, well, when I was in the army as a young man, I spent a winter in Siberia on my own. And he said, after that, you never complain again. God help us to take all of our burdens to the Lord. He takes everything seriously. Every tear, he takes it seriously. But let's keep perspective here. And let's remember that we have much to be thankful for, especially those of us who live in the West. And to use the resources we have, not to live a lavish lives, but to invest it in eternity while we have the opportunity.